Guidelines on Disaster Mitigation, published by me, Malini Shankar and Walter Keller. Hello and welcome to today's book reading session of Preparing for the Day After, a picture ebook. Preparing for the Day After is a photojournalistic treatise on disaster mitigation published by me, Malini Shankar and Walter Keller for the 10th anniversary of the Asian tsunami. Tonight, we will study the need for COVID-19 compatible architecture in a post-COVID-19 era and how we can contextualize it for Indian needs within the Sustainable Development Goals framework. Tonight, we will look at lateritic stone for use in the construction of houses and buildings. However, I must clarify that no COVID-related topics are found in the original work published in December 2014. Let us first recap what we have learned in the previous book reading session before starting tonight's session. Water and sanitation is central to developmental discourse. Livelihoods based on local agrometeorological conditions are the best means of ensuring livelihood security. Culture sensitive food security also has evolved from agrometeorological conditions prevalent in an area. Climate change adaptation, menstrual hygiene, especially for indigenous rural tribal women, solid waste management management, universal health care access, sustainable development goals, culture sensitive food security. These are all factors to be included in the developmental agenda. Media personnel have to be trained in disaster reporting and disaster and in reading disaster preparedness or the lack of it in rural district level areas. Given that in the post COVID-19 era, there is a need for social distancing, workspaces and dwelling spaces need to be adapted for a post COVID-19 era. We already know that more than three persons should not be there in a single room and each person has to sit at least two meters away from another person. That there has to be cross ventilation, fresh air and natural lighting. Any one toilet can be used by a maximum of three people per day. Grey or recycled water has to be used to flush toilets. These factors imply that multi-storied terraced apartment buildings are completely incompatible to post-COVID-19 construction. To make it more cost-effective, this calls for single-storied tenements planning for work-from-home spaces. Even if larger sites are required, it will be justified, justified as it offers the opportunity to mainstream rural population. It also offers an opportunity to increase green cover in private land holdings. Secondly, vertical construction eats up spacing and social distancing, so necessary in a post-COVID-19 world. Thus, the case in favor of single-storied dwelling areas and workplaces are more justifiable, more so in view of its cost efficacy. If the cost of single storey dwelling and workplaces come down, then horizontal spread of urban infrastructure will help mainstream those who are economically backward and vulnerable. Multi storied apartment drain drains cut retake. Multi storied apartments drain water resources unsustainably. Single storey dwelling areas also have fewer toilets and account for lesser consumption of fresh water resources, especially in flush, to flush tanks of toilets. The World Health Organization has called for redesigning buildings, workplaces and homes to facilitate cross ventilation, natural air and lighting and fresh air inlets to defeat SARS-CoV-2 or, SARS or COVID-19. Past couple of weeks, we have learned of low cost construction technologies using bamboo, rammed earth and carbon bottle techniques for construction. Today we will look at laterite or lateritic rock as construction material. Laterite is a kind of volcanic rock found in many parts of the tropics. In India it is found on the west coast and in the western Ghats. Made of a lot of iron content in clayey soil, it is very sturdy. Porous in texture, it retains a lot of moisture but its character is such that over time the rock hardens. Laterite is extensively found in the Western Ghats in India and is also used in construction south of the Konkan coast all along the Malabar region. When one uses lateritic rock, it renders the construction very cool and is very stable. I will now quote from a Wikipedia page on laterite. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, I think I'll come to the Wikipedia page a little later. Uh, according to Encyclopedia Britannica, laterite soil 
or, or a layer is rich in uh, iron oxide and is derived from a very wide variety of rocks weathering under strongly oxidizing and leaching conditions. It forms in tropical and subtropical regions where the climate is humid. Lateritic soils may contain clay minerals, but they tend to be silica poor, for silica is leached out by waters passing through the soil. Typical laterite is porous and clay-like. Lateritic soils may contain clay minerals, but they tend to be silica poor, for silica is leached out by waters passing through the soil. Typical laterite is porous and clay-like. It contains the iron oxide minerals geothite, lepidochrosite and hematite. It also contains titanium oxides and hydrated oxides of aluminum, the most common and abundant of which is gypsite, the aluminum rich representative of laterite is bauxite. Laterite is frequently piezolytic meaning pea-like. Exposed surfaces are blackish brown to reddish and commonly have a slaggy or scoriaceous lava-like appearance. Commonly lighter in color, red, yellow or brown when freshly broken. It is generally soft when freshly quarried but hardens on exposure. Laterite is not uniquely identified with any particular parent rock, geological age, single method of formation, per climate per se or geographic location. It is a rock product that is a response to a set of physiochemical conditions which include an iron containing parent rock, a well-drained terrain, abundant moisture for hydrolysis during weathering, relatively high oxidation potential and persistence of these conditions over thousands of years. I now quote from a Wikipedia article, Laterite is both a soil and a rock type rich in iron and aluminum and is commonly considered to have formed in hot and wet tropical areas. Nearly all laterites are of rusty red coloration because of high iron oxide content. Nearly all laterites are of rusty red coloration because of high iron oxide content. They develop by intensive and prolonged weathering of the underlying parent rock. Tropical weathering or laterization is a prolonged process of chemical weathering and which produces a wide variety in the thickness, grade, chemistry and ore mineralogy of the resulting soils. The majority of the land area containing laterites is between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. Francis Buchanan Hamilton first described and named a laterite formation in southern India in 1807. He named it as laterite from the Latin word later which means a brick. This highly compacted and cemented soil can easily be cut into brick-shaped blocks for buildings. The word laterite has been used for variably cemented sesquioxide-rich soil horizon. A sesquioxide is an oxide with three atoms of oxygen and two metal, metal atoms. It has also been used for any reddish soil at or near the earth's surface. According to Thurston Edgar's 1913 publication, Provincial Geographies of India, a Cambridge University Press publication with the Madras Presidency and the Mysore, Coorg and Associated States, which was extrapolated in an introductory Wikipedia article on laterite, which was, pub which was published in 2010. Thurston Edgar defines laterite and I quote, laterite covers are thick in the stable areas of the Western Ethiopian shield on cratons of the South American plate and on the Australian shield in Madhya Pradesh, India. The laterite which caps the plateau is 30 meters thick. Laterites can be either soft and easily broken into smaller pieces or firm and physically resistant. Basement rocks are buried under the thick weathered layer and rarely exposed. Laterite soils form the upper, uppermost part of the laterite cover. In India, la laterite is found extensively all along the west coast, in the western ghats and in the Deccan traps. The Laterite has also been found in South Central India in the Bidar district, bang in the heart of Peninsula India, so to say, uh, which is the northernmost tip of Karnataka and borders Telangana. So it is right in the middle of the peninsula. If it is found in Bidar so far away from the Western Ghats, it surely can be traced to the Deccan Traps, a forlorn supervolcano sprawling across Western and Central India, spreading across 500,000 kilometers. 2,000 meters thick that erupted for over 30,000 years, around 66 million years ago. The Deccan Trap volcanic explosion is considered by experts to have been a geological corollary 
of the Chicxulub asteroid hit in Mexico 65 million years ago that led to the climate change and species mass extinction of the dinosaurs. The location of the De Deccan traps also geologically corresponds to the Chicxulub disaster site in terms of latitude and longitude east of the zero meridian that is Greenwich Mean Time. Historically, laterite was cut into brick-like shapes and used in monument building. After 1000 AD, construction at Angkor Wat and other Southeast Asian sites changed to rectangular temple enclosures made of laterite, brick and stone. Since the mid-1970s, some trial sections of bituminous surfaced low-volume roads have used laterite in place of stone as a base course in some African countries. Thick laterite layers are porous and slightly permeable, so the layers can function as aquifers in rural areas. Locally available laterites have been used in an acid solution followed by precipitation to remove phosphorus and heavy metals at sewage treatment facilities." Unquote. As a construction material, its advantages include its very firm texture which lends a lot of stability to lateritic rock. Given its porosity, it can also absorb rainwater dispensing with waterproofing wholly. The water retention character of lateritic rock makes it very cool inside a laterite wall. The volcanic nature of the rock also makes it extremely stable construction. Counted as one of the earthen material used in earthen or vernacular architecture, laterite lends an ethnic touch besides reducing cost of construction. Besides, it is a very rich source of other minerals like aluminium, bauxite, gypsite, biomite, silica, quartz, iron and basalt. All these mineral deposits present in the lateritic rock can be craftily harvested for many of the things that go into making household articles. It is an extensively used material in construction. Let me quote again from the same Wikipedia article. When used as a building material, laterite is most desirable in the form of well-joined, small, globular cuirasses. In, in this form, it is most readily quarried in convenient, predetermined shapes. Lateritic soils are well suitable with minimal stabilization as durable materials in the production of compressed earth bricks. Lateritic soils are readily available, especially in the tropics and subtropical regions, and possess adequate grading characteristics required. According to a study titled, A Review of the Use of Lateritic Soils in the Construction and Development of Sustainable Housing in Africa, a Geological Perspective, by authors Oyelami and Fan Roy of the Department of Geology, University of Pretoria, South Africa, and the Department of Geological Sciences, Osun State University, Osogbo, Nigeria, respectively. When moist, laterites can easily be cut with a spade into regular sized blocks. Laterite is mined while it is below the water table, so it is wet and soft, according to Richard Engelhardt, author of a UNESCO study. Upon exposure to air, it gradually hardens as the moisture between the flat clay particles evaporates and the larger iron salts lock into the rigid lattice structure, and they become resistant to atmospheric conditions. The art of pouring laterite material into masonry is suspected to have been introduced from the Indian subcontinent. According to a study by David Rocks called the Ancient Pear Quarrying of Arco Sandstone for Monumental Architecture and Sculpture, after about 1000 AD, Angkorian construction changed from circular or irregular earthen walls to rectangular temple enclosures of laterite, brick and stone structures. Geographic surveys show areas which have lateritic stone alignments which may be foundations of temple sites that have not survived. Angkor Wat, located in the present-day Cambodia, is the largest religious structure built by the Suryavadman II, the then ruler of the Khmer Empire, from 1112 AD to 1152 AD. It is a world, UNESCO World Heritage Site. The sandstone used for building of the Angkor Wat is a Mesozoic sandstone quarried in the Norm Kulin Mountains about 40 kilometers away from the temple. The foundations and internal parts of the temple contain laterite blocks behind the sandstone surface. The masonry was laid without joints mortar. Lateritic rocks have been extensively used in all temples of Angkor Wat that have been built since 1000 AD. Its porosity makes it easier to save groundwater table. Laterite can be used for house construction, compound walls, rainwater harvesting tanks, pathways, roads, disaster shelters, public buildings like schools, community halls and centers, hospitals, water treatment plants, corp post pits, 
treatment, the sewage treatment plants, etc. Lathodite cannot be used in reservoirs and dams because of its nature of absorbing water in the porous stone. Lathodotic rocks are dressed as construction bricks ready for use in the construction industry. Cutting this lathodite rock calls for special artisanal skills. Their services are now so special are now so specialized in agrometeorological skill that they can afford to mark up their price because the mainstream construction workers cannot cut and dress the lathodotic rock so well, causing wastage of rock. However, even if the artisans mark up their price for cutting and dressing lateritic bricks for construction, it still remains comparatively lesser in cost than usage of steel and other reinforced cement concrete like materials. Laterite remains one of the most sustainable sources of construction material. Lateritic rock facilitates cool ambient temperature indoors as it is porous and retains moisture content. It is ideal for tropical climes in the day and the age of climate change. It is this factor that makes the use of lathodotic stone as construction material so utterly sustainable, lending cost efficacy to unparalleled levels. Laterite thus also contributes to resource efficiency, indoor air quality, energy efficiency and affordability. A lathodite stone construction can last for a few centuries at least, ideal for construction of institutions and monuments. Other advantages of lathodite are construction material as a construction material include it is toxic free, anti decay, shock and force absorbent rate, created from recycled materials, easy to trim, cut, drill, and plane, multi purpose materials, suitable for both indoors and outdoors, moth, mildew, water, and rust resistant. Using lacerite for construction means one can also use mud plaster as an adhesive to cement the bricks to one another while building the walls. This may necessitate erecting bamboo posts to bear the construction load. There one has to use cement concrete to fill up the pillars or the bamboo posts. But that is still far more cost effective as one can dispense with usage of cement concrete to plaster the laterite dressed stones or bricks. To cement the laterite dressed stone, one can use only mud plaster. Mud plaster complements the natural characteristics of laterite and hence retains a cool, moist temperature indoors. By dispensing with cement concrete and by reducing indoor temperatures, one is significantly reducing heat and emissions. Thus, usage of laterite, mud plaster, bamboo, rammed earth, sandstone, clay, porotherm bricks or any other earthen material is directly contributing to climate change mitigation. To further climate change mitigation, one may also opt for further adaptation measures, including installation of solar panels to power electricity through LED fittings, use recycled grey water for flush tanks to lessen the use of fresh water for primary usage in cooking, bathing and drinking only. Fresh water may also be used to water the plants. One can also decrease usage of indoor lighting during daytime by planning and installing wide windows to let in natural fresh air and lighting, facilitate circulation of fresh air and ventilation. These measures are not only cost effective but also climate friendly as they mitigate climate change. While one story spacious tenements made of earthen material make it uh, conducive for green cover, it is scientifically required today to plan for 33% green cover in every plot of housing land. That not only gives a lot of green buffer between neighbors, but permits urban wildlife or creatures of a lesser god to cohabit peacefully. That is sustainable, cost effective and climate friendly. Lathodotic rock edifices go best with roof tiles also made with clay and topsoil. In doing so, you will be ticking all the rule boxes in favor of sustainability, urban wildlife and environment conservation and climate change adaptation. More significantly, it is pocket friendly and cost effective. Usage of earthen material is also aesthetic. Further, by using earthen material, one will utilize resources and local labor, cutting down on transport costs significantly. That is all for today, folks. With this, I have now completed an extended series on COVID-19 compatible architectural necessities. Next week's video will focus on a very interesting geological event, the Chicxulub hit, asteroid hit in Chicxulub in Yucatan, Mexico, 65 million years ago, which triggered the biggest asteroid hit in the planet Earth's history. It caused massive tsunamis across the Atlantic Ocean and triggered volcanic explosions around the whole world. It led to mass extinction of dinosaurs and climate change. It marked the end of one geological era. 
if you recall i had mentioned that i will do one whole episode only on the ge ge geological catastrophe called chicxulub it is one of the most fascinating geological episodes in the earth's history please do share tonight's videos in your circles and do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and click on the bell icon please don't forget to log in for the live interaction on saturday 29th of may 2021 at around 7:30 pm indian time i do hope it will be interesting i am looking forward to an interesting interaction till then take care keep smiling stay home and stay safe ciao and take care